You could spend months or even years practicing your rudiments but go nowhere if you're not practicing them the right way. The truth is though that you don't need to learn all 40 rudiments in order to be a good drum set player. There is a far more important skill that you absolutely must learn first and I'll share it with you alongside a super practical and even fun exercise that you can do right now on the drums that will take you further than rudiments will. Let's get started. First, I'll break down for you here why you don't need to focus on rudiments as a drum set player. And instead, I'll show you what you absolutely do need to focus on for maximum success on the drums. And I'll give you a really practical, maybe even fun exercise you can do on your practice pad that will actually take your drum set skills further than rudiments will. If you've watched many of my videos or hung around this non-glamorous community for very long, you've probably heard me say many times that it's not so much what you practice on the drums, it's how you practice it. In other words, it's the core skills and the, a lot of times the core mindsets of how you approach something that will affect the outcome and the results you get more than what you're actually doing. Another way to look at this is time spent practicing something not well or practicing something the wrong way is wasted practice time. In other words, say you're practicing rudiments, but you're doing them with improper technique. That's ultimately gonna get you nowhere because you've gotta get the technique together first. Only then can you actually find success with the rudiments. And the interesting thing is something that I hear all the time for many of you guys, especially when I send out these surveys to my email list just to hear what are you working on, what are you struggling on? And so many times it comes down to, I'm, I'm feeling like I'm not growing. I wanna grow, I'm practicing a bunch. And so many of you guys have even told me like you've got over an hour every day a lot of times. Like you've got a lot of practice time and you're able to practice several times a week. And that's awesome. That's great that you have all the time to, to work on these things. And I know especially through COVID, a lot of folks have had more time, which has been a, a blessing for many people. But if you're not practicing the right way and you don't know exactly what you need to practice and you don't really know what the obstacles are that are keeping you stuck in a rut or stuck on a plateau, then a lot of times you're not gonna grow. But a lot of times it comes back to very simple things like grip that are holding you back. Now we're gonna circle back around to overcoming plateaus and getting out of ruts and those things here in a minute. But first I wanna argue that you as a drum set player really don't need to focus on rudiments. You don't need to master rudiments in order to play the drums well. And if you're like, what? I mean rudiments are like building blocks of drumming. Don't I need to learn rudiments in order to play the drums? Um, maybe, depends on the style, but ask yourself this question. So ask yourself, no, number one, do you consider yourself a good drummer? Or do you know of like a good drummer around you, Some like a drummer that you look up to? Who is a drummer you look up to where you could say they are a good drummer? And ask yourself, what are the qualities of that person and their playing? What is it that makes them a good drummer? If you think about it, I, I know we all want to do chops. We all want to work on rudiments and be able to do, you know, quick, flashy stuff around the kit because it's fun. And there's no harm in doing that when you've got your grip together. But when it comes down to it, if we ask the question of what makes a good drummer, how would we answer that? Probably good time, good dynamics, good kit mixing so that they sound good. You know, a good drummer is always going to sound good because they know how to hit things. They know how hard to hit things. And then they have good instincts. They have good musical taste. A good drummer is always going to know what to play and when to play it, how to serve the song. And then on top of that, we could dig into the, the social people skills aspects where a good drummer is someone who is friendly, who gets along with people, who has a good attitude, who shows up on time, who shows up prepared, who sets his gear up quickly and in time for rehearsal to start or for the gig to start, and who isn't consistently running late. Th those are such important things that uh, a lot of times are overlooked and aren't really taught. But any good you know, working drummer who plays with bands, who subs for people, and who people enjoy working with, that's gonna be somebody who has good people skills and who is fun to be around, easy to get along with, and they come prepared. That's kind of the 50%. In a way, the, the joke is that 50% is showing up on time. That's kind of true. Show up on time, show up prepared, and then be a good drummer. But that's a very important piece of the puzzle, and so honestly, those social skills are more important than the rudiments. I can pretty confidently say that it's more important that you've prepared for the rehearsal or for the gig and that you've shown up on time with a good attitude than it is that you've practiced rudiments the last several years. You could totally not practice rudiments, but work to sound good, show up on time, uh, have a good attitude, be easy to get along with. That's way more important. So I know that's kind of a side tangent, but just to put that, that perspective out there for you, because I know so many of you guys 
have a goal of playing songs. So many of you have gotten into the drums because you want to play songs and you want to play songs as well and you want to play with a band. Uh, I know I'm speaking to a very large audience, but from what I've heard from my one-on-one -on -one students and those of you who are enrolled in my courses and who have emailed me and who fill out the surveys that I send out to my email list, the common thread all the time when I say, what is your biggest dream on the drums? What is your big goal? It so often, like 90% of the time, revolves around learning songs, knowing how to play songs well, sounding great with a band. Like that's, that's the dream, that's the big goal. It's not to play rudiments. A lot of times what's frustrating us is our hand technique and our inability to, to play rudiments and play fast around the kit. But when we sit back and we think, what do we really want to do? What is our goal on the drums? It's almost always to play songs and to make music. That's why we're getting into this. That's why we got into drums in the first place for so many of us. And that's what this channel is about. My goal is to teach you how to play songs well by teaching you all these important core skills that actually go into that, not into playing drum core, marching band kind of stuff. If you're into drum core, if you're wanting to learn all of that stuff and you're wanting to learn flashy stick tricks and chops based stuff, this is not the channel for you. There are plenty of other great channels on YouTube that teach that. But me as a person and as a drummer, my desire is to play songs really well and to make music on the drums. And I'm learning more and more that that is your desire too. So many of you guys uh, fit into that where you're wanting to just play songs. And so that's why many of us get into this instrument. And so what I'm teaching you today is getting you to that end result. How can we play songs better? How can we sound better on the drum set? That's the big overarching thing that we, we have to keep in mind. We've got to stay grounded in that and base our practicing off of that. What is our end goal? So how can we practice more productively, not focusing on rudiments, but focusing on the things that matter so that we become better drum set players? Well, one of my favorite uh, concepts, rules, to uh, throw out there to think about food for thought, I guess, is the 80-20 rule. Kind of like my, it's not what you practice, it's how you practice the thing. This is one of my like go-to things that I love talking about and teaching because it makes a lot of sense and it sheds a lot of light on the fact that not everything you practice leads to results. The 80-20 principle states that only 20% of the work you put into something will generate 80% of the results and vice versa. 80% of the work you're doing will only generate 20% of the results, which is kind of crazy and seems a little counterintuitive, but that's the way so many things in life work. That's the way it is with productivity and with, with work and with practicing. And so we can ask ourselves, what is that? 20% that we actually practice regularly, like whenever we're sitting down and practicing, that helps the most. And I think if we're honest with ourselves, we can admit that it's basics. It's things like singles, making sure we're gripping well. Because think about it, if you get your grip in shape, if you're gripping well and you spend like 15 minutes practicing that and then an hour on other stuff, well working on the grip is gonna translate to all the other stuff because what are we doing when we play the drums? We're hitting things and we're having to get rebound, we're having to move fluidly around the kit and working on grip leads to all of those things. If you neglect grip, if you practice rudiments and all these other things without focusing on grip, in other words, you have a what, but you don't have the right how, you're gonna get stuck. You're gonna be in these ruts where you're not progressing and you're not sure why, and you're struggling, you're frustrated, because you're like, well, Steven, I'm practicing all this stuff. I'm practicing the stuff that everybody says to practice, but I'm not growing and I'm frustrated and I'm stiff and I'm hitting a speed wall and I'm not loose and I'm not relaxed and I'm tense and I'm nervous. That's probably why. So many times it comes down to just the absolute basic of get your grip together, get things loose. If you spend significant time working on that, zero in on that 20%, because I bet for 99% of you, that's what it is. That's the, that's the core thing. Spend time on that. That's going to lead to 80% of your results across the board in your practicing, and it's going to get you out of the rut. It's going to get you off the plateau. You're going to get much closer to reaching your goals. You're going to start playing songs better, playing more in time, and playing more relaxed. That's important. That's what I want for you guys. That's crucial. So, okay, Stephen, enough of the conceptual, enough of the stating principles and rules. Let's, let's get practical with this. So I told you I'd give you a practical exercise. So I was listening to an interview with um, New York drummer Mark Juliana a few years ago. Uh, it's a really good interview. I'll link it in the description. He's sort of known in the drumming community for playing a lot of cool experimental electronic, sort of chops-based music. Very impressive to watch, and he's got phenomenal technique and facility around the kit. An ability to play a lot of chops, play a lot of rudiments and things like that. But at heart, he is really into singer-songwriter stuff. He loves playing songs, you know, playing gigs where he can be very minimal in the way he plays. He's just become known in the drumming world for the more experimental stuff. But anyways, in this interview, the guy interviewing him was asking, so 
gigging in New York City, living in New York City, how do you practice? Because, I mean, does the, the, do, do drums work when you're in an apartment in New York City? And Mark said, well, I pretty much just practice on my pad. I don't, I don't even have a, a kit in my apartment. I just play on my pad. Well, what do you practice on your pad? I mean, what are you practicing that's actually going to help you on the, on the drum set? And he said, singles, eighth notes. Just practice my eighth notes. I practice playing really steady, practice playing slowly. I want to get really good at playing softly. And so I'll practice slow and soft. And I'll play a little louder and I'll just do a lot of slow stuff, working on rebound, working on staying relaxed. As I'm listening to him explaining this, my mind was kind of blown, but at the same time, it was like, well, I know this to be true. This is, this is what we play on the drums. We play so many slow songs on the drums and a lot of grooves that aren't fast. So why is it that when we sit down at a practice pad, our default is like... Why do we go into like rudiments and doubles when we sit down at a practice pad just because it's a practice pad and we like go into doing our finger workouts and going into all that stuff, which is fine uh, when you're ready for it, when you follow the steps to progressively get there. But how often do we actually practice on our pad what we're going to use on the gig? And that's what Mark Giuliano was getting at here. And so what I've done in my own practicing, I used to live in an apartment, and so I kind of took his concept and ran with it and figured out, okay, what is a practice routine I can do on my pad that will translate to the kit that I can do quietly here in my apartment that will help me be a better drum set player and play songs better? Well, here's a routine I started doing, and this is your practical exercise, your action step for today. What I would do is set my metronome to like 65 beats a minute and start playing eighth notes. And so I would do this with one hand. Let's get 65 going here for reference. Yeah, it's about right here. So if I were doing eighth notes at 65, I'd start right here and then go from the eighth notes, maybe into sixteenths. All while staying in time, go back to the eights and then even go to quarters. But what's cool is you could also do triplets in between those, just focusing your ability to feel the tempo, feel the pulse, but play different subdivisions, play different note groupings within each beat. So if the beat is this right here, we could do our eighth notes and two and three. We could also go into triplets, triplet, triplet, and then go to the 16th and so on. And then we could actually, instead of going straight from the 16th into 16th triplets, we could throw in some fives. So we could go like this. At this point, it's getting pretty fast at this tempo. And so you can, you know, go as fast as you're able to, but focus mostly on those slow subdivisions and practice doing this alternating. Really my favorite way to practice this. Just going like that, doing the whole thing, eighths, eighth note triplets, sixteenths, sixteenth note triplets, and then 30 seconds. Usually that's about where we'd max out and then work it backwards again all while staying in tempo and staying super locked in. Uh, here's how that might go if we do that full progression.
kind of our overarching thought here is practice on your pad the things that are actually going to help you on the drum set. The things that are going to help you most on the drum set, which are those core skills of timing, dynamics, being able to feel the pulse of the music. Uh, because, so this is really a multi-dimensional uh, exercise here because you're working on a lot of different things. If you're doing this with a metronome, you're improving your time, your ability to subdivide. You can also practice this at different dynamics and practice adding in different crescendos, decrescendos, which is extremely practical for drum set. And all while you're doing this, you're focusing on your grip because honestly, before you practice this exercise, you need to make sure this is happening. Just quarter notes at that tempo. Quarter notes of 65, make sure you've got a loose fulcrum, space in your hand, fingers are extending to let the stick bounce. I've got a bunch of videos about this. I'll link a few specifically in the description where we dig into the mechanics of this into exactly what your hand should be doing when you play those singles. That way you're set up for success for this. That way you have a solid foundation. Also, a couple years ago, I did a video digging into this type of exercise, so I'll link that in the description also. But what if you're like, but Steven, what if I want to learn rudiments? Like, what if, what if I just want to learn my rudiments just for the sake of doing them? Because there is something satisfying in, in learning rudiments and in learning these things. But if you want to learn rudiments just for the sake of doing them, I'm not going to stop you. The only reason I say in this title, don't practice rudiments until you've learned this first, well, it's because you're going to be frustrated if you haven't gotten your grip together first. So prerequisites, have that done, have that taken care of, have that squared away. And then if you want to learn rudiments, great, go for it. The whole point here is you've got to build the foundation of your house before you build the structure. If you like build a horrible foundation that's like two inches of concrete, it's going to crack, it's going to fall apart, it's going to leak. Or if you skip the foundation altogether and you feel more productive practicing rudiments because it's hard and it frustrates you, you feel like that's a good thing. But it's not if, if the frustration is because your grip isn't good. I think, I think that's something that really you've got to understand in, in your practicing because a lot of times, so I've, I've done some recent surveys of my email list where I'll ask you guys things like, uh, what are you frustrated by? So maybe it's your grip, your lack of ability to play doubles. Uh, I just can't play fast enough. I keep hitting a speed wall. I can't use my fingers, et cetera, et cetera. And I might also ask a question like, um, what, what do you think you could do in order to overcome that hurdle? So what do you think you could fix or what could you implement in order to solve that frustration? And what I hear so many times is um, practice more, practice more, you know, just figure out how to practice better, <laughs> which practice better, that's true. Practice more, not so much because more is not better with practicing unless you're very strategic in how you're practicing. And so I'm feeling like a lot of you guys are in this place where you're practicing the things that we drummers are supposed to practice. You're, you're playing your, your rudiments, you're at least doing your singles and your doubles, and you're working on playing around the kit smoothly and playing in good time. You're working on these things, but because your how isn't exactly where it needs to be, you've got the what, but the how isn't laser focused on doing things well and doing things the right way, maintaining a high level of quality in your practicing, that's what's causing these frustrations. It's not that you need to practice more, it's that you need to practice specifically this right here and make sure you're getting that loose grip. Remember, that's our 20%, 80-20. That's the 20%. Practice this, that way that's gonna lead to 80% of all these other results. Then once that's happening, then you can get into rudiments. But like I said earlier, as a drum set player, Rudiments are not crucial building blocks of your playing. They are not vocabulary. Uh, I want to make sure you understand that too, that rudiments are not the alphabet of drumming. I've heard that said before where it's like, well, in order to figure out how to play all these fills and be able to play my favorite songs, I got to learn my rudiments. That way I can then string the rudiments together in order to say something on the drums. Not the way that works. Rudiments are not the alphabet. That's not how we construct our sentences. That's not how we construct our thoughts. Rudiments are a means to an end. If you're at a point now where you're able to practice the rudiments, that's great. That's going to build more facility. It's going to test out. Really, that's what, that's what rudiments are going to do. They're going to test out your ability to stay loose as you move around the kit. And those, those skills will indirectly carry over to what you do on the drums. But they're not super important. They're not super crucial unless you're getting into jazz, unless you're getting into fusion. Uh, if you're into like the 70s, 80s fusion stuff, there's, there's some modern day fusion out there too. It's less, a less popular genre now than it used to be. But if you're getting into fusion, that is very rudimental. If you're getting into jazz, well, that's, that's very rudimental bass where you might play fills that are... Where it's like that, that's just a paradiddle diddle. Very simple. Learn your grip, master singles, then doubles, 
Paradiddle diddle, right, left, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, right. Throw in a little of this. And that right there alone can create a whole bunch of cool jazz stuff. So that might be an exception to the rule, but even there, there's not a bunch of crazy rudiments. It's very simple. It's just singles and doubles mixed in to form a pair of diddle diddle, which you might use in a jazz context. So if you're getting into jazz, if you're getting into fusion, sure, learn the rudiments only after you've mastered the grip. But otherwise, if you're playing at your church every Sunday morning, you're playing rock and pop cover gigs, you're playing country, rudiments are not those building blocks and you do not need to feel like you've got to figure out how to incorporate paradiddles around the kit. Don't feel like you need to do that. Don't feel pressured by a lot of the other leading voices of drumming education on YouTube. Don't feel pressured by them to learn all this stuff. Just because there are viral videos out there that say how to apply the paradiddle to the drums with people playing crazy paradiddles around the kit, that doesn't mean you need to do that. Maybe some people do. If they're wanting to do fusion, if they're wanting to do jazz, okay. But the prerequisite is crucial here. Make sure you've got your grip together first. Okay, <laughs> I hope that I've uh, thoroughly hammered this point across to you. And I hope that this is all clear and that this makes sense and that you understand the progression here of skills in order to get where you need to go. We've got our overarching goal of songs. We've got maybe a means to an end of rudiments, but we're not gonna work on the rudiments till our grip is together. So keeping all that in mind, I don't wanna just leave you with this because sometimes you can get to a, the end of a video like this, especially when it's kind of a longer video and we're going deep. With a little bit of, you can leave with a little bit of confusion like, okay, okay, I'll practice that exercise. All right, and then you'll get tired of it and then you'll kind of forget about it, move on to other stuff. I don't want that to happen. So I've created a brand new, totally free PDF e-guide you can go download, it's in the description. It's called the Fast Fluid Hands Checklist. And this guide's really cool because it's simple and each page is a step, we go through four steps. These four steps start off with absolute bare bones fundamentals we didn't even talk about today in this video of how to drop the stick and get rebound and how to put singles together, what to do with your fingers, what to do with your fulcrum, do you form the fulcrum with middle finger or index? We dig into all those very common questions that I've heard so much from you guys. Because I've been hearing this so much, this is just one of those pressing issues and I just felt the need to make this video to help you out with this, to help you break past these ruts and these walls you're hitting and you're practicing. So go download the guide, this is gonna help you. I've got a whole list of <laughs> bullets right here. It's gonna help you hold your sticks right, for one thing, for long-term success, and it's gonna help you eliminate your weak hand. Man, that's gotta be the most common struggle that I hear. My weak hand, I can't get my left hand to play what it's supposed to play. How do you eliminate the weak hand? By practicing these basic singles and things on your pad, working both hands equally. We're gonna eliminate the weak hand here. You're also gonna learn how to use your fingers to build speed and control. You're gonna harness the power of your fingers that you didn't know they were capable of doing, which is very fast, agile motion, so that you can play with greater speed and actually greater fluidity. You can use your, your fingers to play more loosely, which is really cool. Also, this is gonna help you play your favorite songs with ease, navigating around the kit. Remember, that's the end goal. We wanna to get to the end. Practicing hand technique, that is a means to an end. We, don't, we didn't get into the drums to practice hand technique, we got into the drums to practice songs, to learn songs, to master songs, to play with a band and to perform. And in order to do that, we've gotta be comfortable and that starts with the grip. You're gonna get much closer to that by working through this guide. So all in all, you're gonna know the exact steps that you need to follow to master hand technique. It's all laid out nicely, short 10 page guide. That's why I call it a checklist. It's literally like, okay, check that box, I've done that. Move on to step two, check that, move on to step three. And there's some bonus steps for um, speed exercises and strength building. So check it out, the Fast Fluid Hands Checklist. I've put this together just for you because I've just been feeling like this is such a big obstacle to so many people. And this is something that needs to be addressed that we need to fix. This is a very common weakness. We've got to get our hands together. So go download it now. It's going to help you out a bunch. As always, guys, thanks for, thanks for spending time with me today. Thank you for sticking through this video. I know your time is valuable and I value your viewing and your learning and growing. I'm thankful to be able to help you grow as you're, as you're working through all this stuff. Know that you can do this. When you follow the steps, when you implement these things, when you take action, when you're disciplined, when you have work ethic and the curiosity to grow, nothing's gonna stop you. You can do this. You can master hand technique. You can overcome this hurdle, get out of this practicing rut, and reach your goals and nail your favorite songs. You can do this. I believe in you. So let me know how this goes. Let me know how this helps you. 
Go download the guide right now. Practice that exercise, download the guide. Those are your two big action steps. Thanks as always everyone for watching. If you're new, be sure to subscribe. You can do this. I'll see you on the next video.